down to five, four, three, two, one. And hopefully we are live. Carla, tell yeah. me when it's up there. Two, one. There we go. It's got me counting down. All right. So we're going to mess around for a couple minutes, let everybody get logged on. And we're excited. We shared it numerous times. It's been shared a bunch and people are logging on right now. And uh, we're going to have a good time tonight. You fellas ready to have a good time? Amen. 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 Good. Good. Everybody's saying everything's sure. fine. We're good out there. And uh, Brother Chris and Brother Jody and Brother Kogan is on here tonight. And we're going to have a good time doing uh, the Hour of Power. And I don't know if this is going to be the last one. I don't know. But we was just talking about who's going back to regular church. And uh, if we're getting back in our buildings, which we're excited for that. And I haven't made any announcements or talked to my church about it. Uh, but we will be talking about it here soon and figuring out exactly what we're going to do. Uh, but there are other churches and different folks that are back to regular now. And if we as a regular church, I'm sure most of us would probably maybe still be in church, uh, but we may continue to do it once a month or something like that. Uh, it's been beneficial. It's helped me and it's been a real encouragement. Amen. Yes. Uh, amen. So, so what we're going to do, we'll, we'll just go ahead and start and people log on. Uh, this is the hour of power and this thing's been a blessing to us. We just prayed. Uh, the, the one thing we saw missing from church uh, was corporate prayer. We was getting fed by preaching online. Uh, we, we could hear singing online. We could do all that, but uh, praying with our brothers and sisters, honestly, was non-existent unless you was just calling one person individually and praying over the phone. Uh, and so we started this five, six weeks ago uh, to just pray with each other and for people to come on to give prayer requests so that we could pray. And this is Brother Chris Manatter from Hopewell Baptist Church up here in your top left. Uh, Brother Jody Polly down here on the bottom left of Sycamore. Hey, everybody. And this is Kogan East of uh, Pleasant Hill Baptist Church in Blacksburg, South Carolina, and his wife, Michaela. And I'm, I've known, been around Kogan a little bit for uh, several years. And I remember praying with you at the Arise. We didn't even know each other, but they, they said, pray with somebody. I walked up there and prayed with you. Uh, but uh uh, we was at a prayer retreat uh, not too long ago that some of the other men, Heath and Vaughn and these other men that was on here were on. And and man, I, uh, how old are you, Kogan? 22. 22 years old, young. Uh, hey, but man. I promise you this boy can pray. I've sat listen to him pray. He can preach. He's a fine preacher. And I've been listening to him preach and pray over uh, at his new church there. But he ain't been pastoring long. But I'm thankful to have him on. We're going to go. We're going to have a good hey, time. Man. So here's the format tonight. They're going to sing for us in just a minute. And uh, uh, Michaela, now was you a Matthews or a Rochester? I don't know the history. <laughs> Matthews, okay. Uh, but same with the Rochester family her whole life, right? Yeah. And uh, Kogan Amen. slipped his way in there. Amen. Now he's a singer. Amen. <laughs> he's wonderful. But here's the, they're going to sing for us in a minute, but here's the format for tonight. Uh, you can send in a prayer request anytime you want, and, and we will pray for it. All you got to do is comment on the Facebook feed. Most of you know a lot of the people that's on here have been on here before. Uh, but but and, and us as pastors had not talked to Kogan about it, but me, Jody, and Chris, if you notice, we go back and pray over them during the week. You'll see us comment and like, and you put a prayer request over there, and we're committing to go back and pray over these things throughout the week. Amen. And, and and so put your name. We'll know your name, but put your maybe some, a few details. Don't write a book, but a little bit. Let us know, and we will go back and pray over those. Uh, number two, these men are going to do two or three, four-minute devotions on a certain topic that we picked out uh, tonight. Tonight, we've got the family unit. We've got attacks from Satan, intercessory prayer, and revival. And these men are going to do a short devotion on that. And, and But the real focus is corporate prayer tonight. After they do that devotion, we're going to pray. And all of us are going to pray together. And, and we want you putting prayer requests in a side. We'll have it on the screen of, of the different things we're requesting prayer for. But uh, you put those over there and we will pray for those tonight. And, and lastly, as these men touch on that topic and, and the Lord begins to lead them to pray, we're all going to pray together. Uh, and, and I know a lot of folks are used to one man leading a prayer and everybody else being silent. Uh, that's not really what we're going to do tonight. Amen. I don't, I'm not sure if that's in the Bible. Amen. Uh, when a man leads a prayer, the other people pray, but I find that it seems like oftentimes our church is one man's leading a prayer and everybody's just listening to that man. Well, I don't think that's how it was designed to be. Uh, 
uh, just right, the preacher. purpose, leading Amen. a prayer. We're all going to pray uh, with the mm -hmm. man that's leading that. Amen. So we're going to talk about these different devotions in just a second. But I'm going to have Brother Kogan and Sister Michaela sing for us for just a second. Uh, so you guys go ahead and sing us a song tonight. God bless you. Help them, Lord. I'm tired of just the same old thing. Yes, yes. I'm tired. Amen. I'm tired of the song and no praise. We're worshiping you. Yes, Lord. I'm tired of religious formats. Yes. Yes. Yes, Lord, help them tonight, God. Center of our Lord, church, all the way on tonight. Lord, help people tonight, Lord. Center of our Lord. Lord, let us see people help, Lord. Please, God, tonight. Lord, we love you. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Ain't that wonderful? Yes. Yeah. That song gets me fired up every time. And me Ain't and my daughter true. learn how to sing that song, listen to uh, her sing that. Amen. Listen to them Rochester CDs. Amen. Uh, but that's good. Good. Thank you guys for doing that for us. Thank you for singing for us. Um, but we're going to start praying. Amen. So, uh, Brother Chris, I want you to go ahead and talk about families tonight, if you would. All right. God bless you guys. Thank you for coming on with us this evening. I'll share just a couple of quick points with you. I'll try to be a help to you, but if there's one thing that the devil is trying to do, he's trying to destroy the home. He's trying to destroy uh, the family and the devil wants to pull your kids out. He wants to pull you out. He wants to attack you as an individual and we've got to not let the devil have his way. And we've got to pray for our family, our strength. Uh, listen, people are calm quarantine tight quarters and families are uh, stuck together uh, all the time. And I tell you, we got to use it for our advantage, use it to grow closer to God uh, through this time. And so we're praying tonight uh, that God will bless our families and God will give us strength uh, in this difficult time that we're facing. And uh, a couple of things I wrote down just to be a help to us tonight. Uh, when we're thinking about the family and thinking about the devil's attack on the family, the first thing we got to do, everybody, uh, is admit we're a sinner and seek Christ's forgiveness in our life. All yes. of us are sinners and all of us need God's forgiveness. All of us need God's help in yes. our life. Some of you may be this night and you're not saved at all. And you know, you need to trust in Jesus as your savior, uh, his death, burial, and resurrection on the cross of yes, Calvary right. for your soul's salvation and admit to him that you're come short. Admit to him that you're a sinner tonight. Second thing is we got to pray and read every day. Uh, get a Bible reading schedule, a prayer schedule together, and start praying together as a family. Uh, start praying every day and it is an individual uh, for your life, for yours. I, I love Psalm 91. And uh, write that down tonight. Pray through Psalm 91. It's a great Amen. psalm. 
uh, psalm to pray through. Let me read just a couple of verses of it to you. The Bible Man. says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide on the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In Him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust him. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor by the arrow that flieth by day. Just an encouraging verse uh, that we can pray through, read through the whole thing and pray it. Uh, but God will protect you if you just trust in him and put your Man. family's trust in him. Uh, God yeah. promises you that he's going to put us under the shadow of the wing of the Almighty. Amen. Remember this, God is stronger than the devil's attack. We yeah. can always defeat the devil through the blood of Jesus. Claim the blood, uh, claim Jesus over your life and his power. The Bible says in James 4, 7, submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil and he shall flee from thee. And when we submit ourselves to God and we're trusting in the Lord and claiming Amen. the blood, Jesus, yes, the devil has no other option but to flee. Quote scripture to him. Uh, Jesus quoted scripture when the devil came to him and tried to attack him. I heard a preacher say one time, start singing about the blood. Uh, the devil starts invading your home, invading your marriage, invading your house. Hey, man, start singing about the blood. Amen. And, uh, the devil has got no other choice uh, but to flee from you. Amen. And then lastly, we got to turn away from the lies of the devil. You know, the devil was a liar and the devil was a deceiver and the yes. devil fills your head full of stuff about your family, about each other and about your spouse and about your church and about your pastor. Listen to me. It's all lies of the devil and you got to stay away from it and turn away from it. I like this verse in second Corinthians 10, five, it says casting down imaginations and everything that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing yeah. into captivity every thought to the <laughs> obedience of Christ. Hey, man, 2 Corinthians 10, 5, write that down. I use that verse in your life uh, because the devil wants to take over the mind. And when I think about the family and I think about the devil attacking the home, let me right. tell you something. He's going to start in your head. He's going to start in your mind and he's going to start telling you lies and tricking you up and trying to tell you things that ain't true about right. your home and about your family. And the Bible says that we got to cast down all those imaginations. Anything that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Listen to me. What is truth? Listen to me. Go to God's word. Pray and read and find what's truth and cling to that truth, the knowledge of God, and bring into captivity every thought. All yes. of your mind, all of your thoughts, bring them into captivity and then obedience to Christ. Amen. And you want to submit yourself to God and resist the devil. And God's going to help you in your home. And so tonight we're praying Amen. for strength in our families. We need strength. In our homes, yes. don't we, church? And uh, we need strength in our families. We want re relationships uh, to be renewed and restored. Listen, I know some of you are battling relationship problems right now, and, and husbands and wives, and, and we need to pray for relationships to be renewed. God can do it. And by the way, yeah. God can restore them. Amen. Strength Amen. in marriage, forgiveness, and release of bitterness. You know what? One of the big problems in marriage is bitterness. And, and and not willing to forgive and not willing to forget. And we've got to let all them things go. Listen to me, I'm thankful I can say today that anything that I've ever done wrong, when I ask God to forgive me of it, he I cast me in as far as the east is from the west. It's yeah. Amen. Me. Amen. I don't have to look back on it. I don't have to think about it anymore. God gets Thank rid you. of it out of my life. And he'll do Thank the same you. thing for you tonight if you'll just let it go. Quit yeah. holding all that stuff up inside of you. That's making you bitter. Let it go and give it to God. And he says, I'll cast it into the sea and it'll be buried there deep forever and gone out of your life. And let yes. God take care of it. Amen. And our sibling relationships, the children in the home, we're praying uh, for all these relationships, uh, parent and child relationships. Uh, this time uh, that we have to draw families close together. I'll tell you, it's been a blessing in my home and we've been drawing closer together. It's a time to get together, not go apart. And listen to me, if your family's struggling, you take it upon yourself tonight to work on mending that relationship, to work on bringing your family back together. Get on your knees before an almighty God and beg God for your family. Beg God for your marriage and beg yeah. God to intervene in your life. Because listen, anything that happens in the family to be torn apart is all the work of the devil. 
And we can't That's let right. that happen, church. We've got to stand up against the attack of the devil. Now's the time to get stronger than ever. And lastly, we're praying, if you would, name families in your church, name uh, people in your church that you're praying for. Or maybe you know someone is struggling. Yeah. If it's private, don't post it. But but let's, let's pray specifically pray tonight. Pray. Uh, uh, for these families uh, that God will strengthen them and help them through this time as we stay home uh, under this quarantine. Let's pray together. If you would, you post in the comments tonight. Uh, we'll be praying over you, your families, and, and all these situations. And listen, pray for me tonight. Pray for my family. Uh, we're not above the attack of the devil. He wants Bless to destroy you, us Chris. as well. Pray for these other preachers and their families. Hey, God wants to destroy them. And we all need God's help uh, through this time. And let's trust Amen. the Lord. And amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, we love you tonight. God, Lord, we thank you. Father, Lord, we love you tonight. Lord, we pray for your family. 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 Lord, help us just for her family, Lord. Lord, be with Donna and Tim and their family, Sean and Casey, Lord. Lord, and their families, Lord. Lord, protect all of our families, Lord. We need God to be very sure. God, we need God to be very sure. God, we need God to be very sure. God, we need God to be very sure. Lord, just be with my family in such a mighty way, Lord. Lord, touch them in such a mighty way, Lord. Lord, pour your blessings out, Lord. Lord, I need more on their needs for you, Lord. I'm just thankful for you. As their Savior, God, we pray. Oh, God, help us to pray. Oh, God, help us to read our Bibles every day. Lord, and all that you've done for me, Lord, you've done better me than I ever deserved, Lord. Lord, I ask you to touch Gary and Lord, God, we want to enter in. And God, we want to stay in your presence, God. We want to stay in your presence, God. Touch Aaron and her family, Lord. Lord, be with them in such a mighty way. Monica and Joey and Jamie and Eric, Lord. God, help us touch them in a mighty way, Lord. Lord, be with Mary and Chris, Lord, love, Lord, and God, you can be with them in our life. Lord, touch them in our lives. 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 Lord, touch them and God, we thank you for the Lord of God. And that we can trust in you, God, we pray. And God, that you help us send our way out from the devil. And God, we can give in for the lies. And God, we can stay strong. 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 And God, we in our walk with you, oh God, God, I pray for my Lord, 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 God, I pray for Lord, be with the lost in her family, the lost in my family, Lord. Be with my church family here, Lord. Lord, be with uh, all of our families, Lord, with our family over Elizabeth, Lord. Lord, be with Brother Homer, Lord. Touch him, Brother Mark, Lord, and Vicky and uh, Carl, Lord, and their family, Kim and Mike and their families, Lord. Lord, Linda, Lord. Lord, be with Joyce and her family, Lord. Be with the Dunlap, Lord. Be with Brother Ralph, Lord. Be with Mary and Chester, Lord. Lord, I ask you, Brother Isaac, Lord, be with Mary and her family, Lord. Lord, touch them, Lord. Help them to grow together, Lord. Lord, be with Brother Rusty, Lord. Touch them in such a mighty way, Lord. Be with Tia and Corey and Macy, Lord. Be with Zach, Lord. Lord, pour your spirit out of God, Lord. Just in Lord, God, and fresh and water, and Lord. And Lord, help us to grow closer to you, Lord. We want to be closer to you each and every day, Lord. Lord, families that are under attack, Lord. I ask that you would just touch the Lord. Lord, those homes that have been broken up, Lord. Lord, that you would just bind them back together, Lord. Lord, that you would touch the section, Lord, to hurt our families, Lord. Lord, that you would touch all the things, Lord. Lord, that you would take it away, Lord. That you would help our families grow back together, Lord. Lord, I ask that you would be with each and every family. 
name of the Lord. Lord, touch the mighty way, Lord. Lord, Lord. Be with all these preachers, Lord, devil, Lord, God, Lord. Lord, in the future, Lord, for my family, Lord. Lord, give me where I fail you, Lord. Lord, help me to lead my family in a better way, Lord. Lord, help me to touch others, Lord, to help others, Lord. Lord, to help others, Lord. Lord, to help others, Lord. Lord, help our families, Lord. Lord, help the lost in our family, Lord. And Oakville Baptist Church. And bless the Hill Baptist Church, Lord. Help the families and all of our churches around this area, Lord. Lord, the family's got to come first, Lord. And we need a strong family in order to have a strong church, Lord. Lord, help us to promote a strong family, Lord. Help us to promote a strong church, Lord. Help us to pray for one another, pray with one another, Lord. Lord, help us to read our Bible together, study our Bible together, Lord. Lord, help us to all things tonight, Lord. Lord, just to want to grow closer to you, to put you at the center of everything that we do, put you at the center of our family, put you at the head, Lord. Lord, and that we would follow you in all things, Lord. Lord, we would only want to do family things, Lord. That we want to bring holiness and righteousness back into our homes, Lord. To shut out the devil, to get rid of the devil in, in our homes, Lord. To lock them out tonight, Lord. Lord, touch us tonight, Lord. I love you. Lord, you're so good. Egypt tonight. Lord, we love you. Touch us tonight. Lord, take over. Lord, our families need you. We need you. God, I pray for Frank Chapman's family. Yeah, yeah. God, help them, Lord. Yes. Help Brother Daniel Dick. It's like a family. God, that preacher been there so long, God. I'm praying, God, you'd strengthen that church family tonight. Yes, God. God, yes, Lord. God, touch the Chapman family, Lord. God. Yes, Lord. Help them, Lord. Help us, God, tonight. Amen. Brother Jody, you go ahead, brother. We know, Brother Jason, uh, there are so many uh, people being attacked by Satan uh, tonight. And there might be people on here with us. And I uh, want to say we love each and every one of you that's on here. And uh, we're so thankful for you joining us. And, and you may be here tonight and you're just trying to pray through some things. Satan's on your back. And, and as I say in our church, it feels like you're fighting hell by the acre. Yes. And it just feels like you, you, you don't know where to turn. You don't know what to do, but you're in the midst of a storm. And, and let me tell you this tonight. And I, I said this on devotional last night and I told our church tonight, uh, sometimes a storm can be a beautiful thing. Uh, sometimes we can't see that, but a storm can be a thing of beauty. And we need those storms yeah. to help uh, the grass grow, to help vegetation grow. And we need the storms in our life to help us grow. Over in First Peter chapter number one, uh, verse number six, it says, Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptation. Listen, there's many times, there's many things that are going on. We have pastors who are being spiritually attacked. We have pastors who it seems like they're just getting hit from every angle. The devil's trying to tell them they've been ineffective over the last six weeks, trying to tell them they're going to make the wrong decisions moving forward, trying to just stay on their back like a backpack and telling them that they're doing all the wrong things. We've yeah. got church members who are being attacked. Listen, I've talked to three or four families just today who are who are just fighting the devil. It mm. seems like every time they start to turn around, every time it, they start to get out, something else happens and they're just trying to carry on. They're just trying to pray through. We got yeah. people who are discouraged. They've got fear. They hear so many conflicting reports. Listen, you get you don't know what to believe. You get on the news. Some people tell you we ought to open everything back up. Other people tell you it ought to 
stay closed for the rest of the year. Other people tell you they don't know what to do. And it, it scares people. It makes them afraid. Anxiety right. is the highest it's ever been. Depression is the highest it's ever been. Suicide rate is up. Alcoholism is up. Uh, people right. addicted to drugs are up. It's tearing us apart. It's tearing our families apart. And Satan is using it. But listen, the Bible tells us that the, that the thief comes to steal and to kill and to destroy. But Jesus Christ came that we ha may have life and yeah. life more Amen. abundantly listen <laughs> stop listening to the devil stop Go letting ahead. him whisper in your That's ear right. stop letting him tell you things are bad stop letting him tell you you're worthless that you won't ever amount to anything that every decision you make's wrong stop listening to the devil listen he's a liar and everything yes. that he That's does right. trying to hurt you trying to destroy you trying to kill you listen there was a time when the disciples were on the boat and the boat was beginning to fill up with water Water. And it didn't just, it says that the boat was full. Listen, any other boat that's full is going to sink. But Jesus was that's on that right. boat. And if he's yeah. in your boat tonight, you're not going to sink. He's not going to let you fall. He's not going to let you fail. You've come too far for it to turn back now. Amen. Keep on. Keep with it. Get away from Satan. Right, Resist him in every way that you can. Let me say this. Paul and Silas looked in a bleak situation. It's about midnight. They were in a Philippian jail. It was yeah. dark. They couldn't even see across the room. But it said they rejoiced at midnight. They began to sing. They began to preach. And the earth quaked and the cells yeah. opened up and nobody went anywhere. Hey, listen, there was murderers. There was thieves in that cell. And they sat around and said, listen, these two right here, we just want to see what's going to happen. If we'll just rejoice at midnight. It said that the disciples, were they had been constrained into the boat and it, they had toiled yeah. all night in rowing. And it was yeah. about the four watch of the night. Listen, they say the darkest, it's always the darkest before the dawn. They got that from the word of God because it was always yeah. the darkest in that fourth watch somewhere between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. It was the darkest that it could be and they had toiled. They were frustrated. They weren't going anywhere. They were stuck in the same spot. But then came Jesus walking on the water. Hey, when we're in the midst of our greatest storm, when we're in our darkest spot, yes. Jesus shows up. Don't don't you let the devil beat you down. Don't you let him have the victory. Don't you let him win tonight. Hey, I yes. just, sometimes we just got to see if we can still pray through. Hey, I'm yeah. telling you right now, we can pray through anything because we've got Jesus on our side. Amen. If a boat full of water won't sink because Jesus is in it, I'm glad he's riding in my boat. Listen, I'm glad he's the one steering the boat. Amen. Right. Amen. We need to get away. From the devil, stop letting him tell you things that aren't true. Stop letting him tell you late at night you need to worry about this That's or you right. need to worry about that. Stop letting him rob you of your rest. Yes. Listen, he wants to rob you of your rest because when you get tired, you're going to get cranky. You're going to make bad decisions. But listen, don't let him rob you of your joy. That's right. Amen, preacher. We need to have joy in the midst Amen. of the yes, storm. Sir. Yes, sir. Listen, sometimes we're going to go to the Lord in prayer, but sometimes just stand there and look at a storm. Yeah. Listen, it might seem like a bad thing, but when those clouds come in, they can be awful pretty. Sometimes you look at the lightning and you listen to the thunder and it can be soothing. Listen, there are times in our life that we're going to go through storms because we're going through a test. Listen, when I was in school, I didn't like tests. <laughs> but I didn't know what I had learned and I didn't know what was left to learn unless I took the test. Hey, we don't know what we've got to learn and what, what we've already learned until we go through the trial and through the storm. But let me say this. It says um, down here in verse number eight, whom having not seen ye love in whom though now ye see him not yet believing ye rejoice with joy yeah. unspeakable and full of glory. It says that we can rejoice and we can have joy in the midst of our trials. Amen. Listen, it says in that verse that our trials are more precious than gold. Listen, our trials are more valuable than gold because Amen. they're growing us yes. closer to God. Don't give up. Don't give in. We want to pray for families tonight who are going through some trials. 
through some tough yeah. things. Maybe they're grieving. Uh, yes. We want to pray for the Chapman family tonight, Brother Frankie Chapman, yes. great man of God. And we want to oh, pray yeah. for his wife, Kim. We want to pray for his brothers and sisters. We want to pray for the folks at Independent Baptist Church. They've lost a number of folks over the last few months. Pray for Pastor Daniel Dent. We want to pray for Elizabeth Baptist Church tonight. Brother Homer has had several people dealing with cancer, has lost several folks. We want to pray for all of our churches, all of our pastors who may be dealing with some storms. Yeah. We want to Amen. pray for our family members. Yes. Maybe they're addicted to drugs. Maybe they're they're hooked on alcohol. Listen, we, they can get a high that they don't have to come off of if they know Jesus Christ. They don't need a 12-step program. They need one step toward Christ, and that'll Amen. take care of things Amen. tonight. Listen, we need to pray for our families who are battling anxiety and depression. Listen, it's a Amen. real thing. And we don't talk about it enough in our churches. We don't talk about it enough in our homes. And people feel like they have nowhere to turn because we don't want to talk about it. But it's real. It's a real thing. Don't you ever let anybody tell you that it's not. And we yeah. want to pray for anybody dealing with that. We want to pray for folks who are afraid. Listen, don't make fun of them. Sometimes we want to say, well, you shouldn't be afraid of that. Everybody's got a fear of something. We want to pray with them Amen. and pray for them. We want to help each other out. Pray yeah. for those students who are disappointed. They're not going through prom. They're not having their graduations. All those things that seem trivial to us are not trivial to them. Those are big milestone accomplishments in their life. Oh, and they're man. disappointed. And, and, and it's leading to depression. And we need to pray for them. Amen. Uh, pray That's for right, each right. other. Listen, pray for my family. Pray for these pastors and their families. Let's go to the Lord in prayer tonight. God, Father God, Lord, we love you. Lord, we pray. Lord, I thank you for all that you do oh, for us. Lord. Lord, touch us tonight. Lord, I ask that you would touch each of these churches. Lord, that you would touch their members who are going through some things tonight. Lord, Lord, people who are feeling the attack of the devil. Lord, Lord, he always comes back to us, Lord. Lord, it seems like when we think we got rid of him, he just comes back with the same exact accusation, with the same exact thing, only strong. Lord, help us. Help us. Lord, help them to know that they can have faith. They can have joy, Lord, through this storm, through the situations that they're facing. Lord, if you're with them, Lord, they can get through anything. If God be Lord. Who can be against us tonight, Lord? That's right. Lord, we're more than conquerors, Lord. Lord, but sometimes we get weak, Lord. Sometimes we, we lose faith, Lord. Forgive us for our failures, Lord. Help us back up, Lord. Tear us, Lord, when we get down. Lord, when we can't walk, Lord. Pick us up, Lord. Lord, help us not fall, Lord. Lord, pick us up when we do, Lord. Lord, cut our families tonight, Lord. Dealing with grief, Lord. Dealing with anxiety, dealing with the Mission to the ones who are addicted tonight, Lord, to drugs or alcohol, Lord. Lord, touch those families who are having to deal, deal with uh, members that have committed suicide, Lord. Touch those who are thinking of suicide, Lord. Make Lord, so thank you on his life. Mark Goff, God, I pray for him. Lord, I'm better if you help him through this trial. better way, Lord. Lord, help him. Thank you, Lord. Help those who are dealing with that thing. Lord. Lord, they're being robbed in the rain and robbed in the joy tonight, Lord. The joy that we have in our lives, God. Provide your work tonight. Lord, help that pastor who's frustrated, Lord. Lord, who's down, Lord. He's not having the Lord. Lord, show him that it don't matter what the world is doing. The world will never know the impact we're having on the side of him, Lord. Strengthen him tonight, Lord. Help him tonight, Lord. Lord, guide him and hold him back for life, Lord. Help that preacher who has a new friend. Not this week, Lord. I pray for you to give him a friend to my God. I pray for you to give him a friend to my God. I pray for you to give him a friend to my God. Lord, help us to draw closer to you in our study and in prayer, Lord. Pray to see our problems, Lord. Help us to read the Lord and die in your own glory. Let our soul win our Lord. Lord, help us to have more impact, Lord. Lord, we pray to see the 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 L
God, help us to resist the attacks of the devil, Lord. Lord, help us to remember to run the fight off on the cast of the prayer, Lord. Help us to return to the battle, Lord. He will be very back. 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 He will be Lord, your boats are not going to change. You're not going to let them fall. You're not going to let them fail. Lord, touch them tonight. Give them courage tonight. Give me encouragement tonight, Lord. Lord, strength to go far in the Lord. Courage to get them to get them down, Lord. Lord, we ask that you would touch them, Lord. Lord, if there's no one here that doesn't help them, Lord, they might come to know you because you pray to help. And God, that you'd help her. And God, you'd give her health, God, we pray tonight. Lord, I claim it in Jesus. Lord, and restore and joy. And God, I pray that she wouldn't suffer anymore. And God, that you'd bless her life. 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 And God, that you'd use her. And God, people would know you because of it. God, oh God, use it. God, we pray. God, I pray for Pastor God. Help him, Lord. Touch us. Touch him, Lord. Help him, God. We love you. Amen. I'll tell you what, there's something about praying for other churches and other pastors. Right. Do something in you, man. I don't know about you, but uh, it Amen. helps me. Oftentimes we get selfish, start thinking about ourselves and think about what we're doing. Uh, but man, we've got to pray for the body of Christ. Amen. We got yeah. to pray for other local churches, Amen. our friends on here. And uh, just what it does, it's what an encouragement it is to know somebody's praying for you. That's what I'm going to talk about real fast. I'm going to talk about intercessory prayer. And uh, uh, we need to intercede for each other, fellas. Uh, we need to intercede for each other, folks. And, and sometimes you just ain't strong enough to pray the prayer yourself. I know what it feels like to not even know what to pray and just to feel weak. And, and sometimes we ain't, and sometimes we ain't in the right place spiritually. Uh, and, and sometimes things are so bad in our lives that we, we don't even know what to pray. And that's when we need our brothers and sisters to be interceding for us. And that's when we yeah. need to be interceding for others. And I believe tonight, I don't know about you, but I believe prayer works. I wouldn't be doing this, this yeah. call. We wouldn't be doing this Amen. Idea if we didn't believe it. Amen. I can't yeah. explain it all. I'm no expert. I do know that I preached on prayer more than any other subject. And I love prayer. Went on a on a on a retreat just for prayer uh, back in uh, October or November, and and we have a prayer revival here. I, I believe it works. Amen. I can't Amen. Pray, but I believe it works. Right, I, I know the Bible says we have not because we ask not. Amen. And listen, I know some folks, uh, uh, and and the Bible says we have faith, believing that God will answer. <laughs> but I know some folks have been praying for years and years and years without answer to that prayer they're seeking. Uh, I know people have been praying for years for God to save someone that they love. I know people have been Amen. praying for years for God to bring somebody back to the church house and get them right with God. I, I, yeah. I know that some folks have been praying for years for God to heal uh, some physical ailment in their body or something wrong with them. And, and listen, sometimes, listen, that's when we need to step in as brothers and sisters and pray for each other to intercede Amen. for one another. The longer yes. you know somebody's been praying for something, the harder you ought to be helping them to pray. Yes, and pray amen. amen. And intercessory prayer is helping each other, pray yes. for each other. Amen. One God man said it like this. Y'all get me excited now. One man said it like this. Intercessory 
prayer is pleading to God on the behalf of others. Uh, some mamas on here, uh, listen, may think that they're the only ones praying for that wayward child to get saved, that lost child to get mm. saved. Some people may think they're the only ones praying uh, for that person in their life to get right with God. Or, 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 or you may be all alone thinking, uh, uh, nobody's helping me pray, but I'm sick and I need God. We don't want that to be the fact tonight. We want you to know that we are praying for you. Yeah. And we want to pray for you tonight. Amen. We want to intercede on your behalf. And intercession right. is prayer that pleads with God for the needs of others. Amen. And listen, I want to intercede on my people's behalf. These other pastors, I know they want to intercede yeah. on their behalf, but I want to intercede. If you've got a prayer request tonight, we want to pray for it. Listen, uh, let me give you a few things real fast tonight uh, that we could just pray for as we're praying for people. In, in Colossians uh, 1 and 9, Paul said this, for this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you. And yeah. we desire, here's what they were desiring as they prayed, and desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Uh, they were praying, listen, uh, for them to know God's will in their life. And, and, and for listen, for a saved person, I don't know about you, maybe you're super spiritual. Sometimes it's hard for me to know exactly what the will of God is in my life. And I'm not talking about the perceptual, perceptual will of God. I'm not talking about what's written down the book. If it's in the book, do it and believe it. Amen. Amen. God tells yeah. you, do it, do it. That is the will for your life. That's his will. If he wants you uh, 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 to be faithful. That's his will. Amen. And, and he does. Uh, but sometimes things, we just don't know exactly what God wants us to do. I remember when God was calling me to pastor up here. I remember thinking about what that entailed in my life as a 30 some year old man with three children and, and living in a house that I owned uh, 50 miles from where I'm pastoring and, and, and being 12 years in the banking world, using my college degree for that. A man in the top 2% of the six largest bank in the nation. I know what it was like. I was sitting there with a career, with a six-figure income, with a family, with all of that stuff. And for me to come and pastor was so huge. It was such a decision. It, I was a nervous wreck. I was scared to death. You can ask my wife. I was pacing the porch every single night. I was asking I, That's one of my traits. I asked her over and over, what do you think, honey? What do you think, honey? Until she was ready to slap me in the head, hey, amen. And, and I was a nervous wreck. But one day in my prayer calls and as I prayed, uh, which seemed unceasingly at that time, just begging God for his direction. One day, a hundred percent peace come over me and I knew exactly what God wanted me to do. But guess what? As I looked today and thought about that decision, I thought, hold on. I wasn't the only one praying. I know my wife was praying for me. I know my parents were praying for me. I know Capital City Baptist was praying for me as I was deciding what to do. I know Grace Gospel Baptist was praying for me and I can't help but think tonight it wasn't just my prayer that gave me that peace, but it Amen. was the intercession being made by God's people for me. Listen, Amen. I'm, telling you, I'm glad somebody was praying for me to know what God wanted me to do. Amen. And that's something we can pray for folks is for them to know the will of God. Not only that, but to do the will of God. Verse 10 says that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work. Paul was praying that they would do, not only know the will of God, but do the will of God. Uh, listen, I'm praying for my church folk to know and do the will of God. I'm praying Amen. for Amen. Do, to witness, to read their Bibles, to pray those things we know God wants us to do. I'm praying for them to be sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit in their life. That's, that's knowing what God wants to do and then following the Holy Spirit and doing what God is telling them to do. I'm praying for folks to be sensitive uh, to the conviction of the Holy Spirit. When God says no, listen, you better listen. You better say no as well. And I'm praying for God for people to not only know the will of God, to follow the will of God, but I'm also praying for people to have the power of God in their life. Verse Amen. 5 is strengthened with all might according to his glorious power. Listen, Amen. I, I, I'm praying, listen, uh, th th there's people that need the power of God more than anything in their life. And yes, yeah, sometimes it's not because they're in his will. Sometimes it's because they're not following his will. But listen, some folks are just in a place where they feel powerless and they need God's power. Listen, uh, uh, they've prayed all the prayers they can for God to heal their body. They need you to pray it now. They prayed long enough for God to save somebody and they need you to pray it now. They prayed long enough yeah, for God to 
Amen. 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 Somebody, I'm thinking of Miss Sheila right now. They need you to pray it now. They yeah. prayed for victory over sin and struggle long enough, and they need you to help them pray now. And I'm asking you tonight, will you be the brethren that helps uh, your brothers and sisters pray? Will you intercede? On their behalf. So we're going to start praying in just a minute. And let's intercede for our brothers and sisters. And, oh, and, and really, whatever it may be, health reasons, disease, salvation. You know somebody in your church is praying for somebody to get saved. Mention their name tonight. You know somebody that's got a disease or got cancer or got some problem. Pray for them tonight. Any, Amen. Any you would give on a regular Wednesday night. Listen, this is what we do. On a Wednesday night, we pray, we intercede for one another. And let's just treat this thing like a regular Wednesday night tonight. And if you've got a prayer request tonight, I want you to put it on here. You know that we're going to go back and pray for you. You know that we're going to uh, follow up on these and pray. So why don't you put your prayer request in the comments as I lead us in prayer tonight. I want you to put any prayer request you've got over there. And we're going to pray over those tonight. Uh, so as we pray, Lord, we love you. God, I pray tonight, Lord, 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 thank you tonight, Lord. The need, God. Lord, we love you tonight, God. We love you tonight, God. Lord, I'm calling God, really God, 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 Lord, that you would touch us in some mighty way, Lord. Lord, you Lord, you help us tonight, Lord. Give us another heat and hurry tonight, Lord. Lord, touch him. Lord, battle the cancer tonight. Lord, touch another heat tonight. Lord, I ask you to make a murder in the first battle of cancer. Lord, that you would put your loving arms around her, Lord, and help her. Lord, that you know she's going to create this day. Him, God, every Lord. Lord, that you would touch her vision, Lord, touch her pain, Lord. For their Lord, that you would be with all the who are sick tonight, Lord. Lord, that you would be with the lost and lost family, Lord. The lost and misguided to the family tonight, Lord. Lord, that you would be with the lost and misguided to the family tonight, Lord. Lord, that you would be with the lost and misguided to the family tonight, Lord. Lord, that you would be with the lost and misguided to the family tonight, Lord. I 
and worse. Come to the God help our God help our missionaries. 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 God Lord, just I ask that you would be with with them, Lord. Help them, Lord. Lord, be with the track ministries, Lord. Lord, be with all these ministries, Lord. Help us to go deeper. Help us to go farther than we've ever gone before. Lord, I ask that you would help us to launch out into the deep. God, we pray that we don't shallow end anymore, but that we go waist deep, neck deep in the water, Lord. That we get out there, drop the nets and fish for men, Lord. Lord, that we go Lord. Lord, I ask that you would help these churches, Lord. Help these men of God. Give us hope for the labor, Lord. Help the ministry be better than they've ever been. Grant it, Lord. Grant it, Lord. Grant it, Lord. Help us, 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 Lord. Yes. God, let our children see what real prayer is. God, yes. let them see daddies weeping through the night. God, let them see mama's God. Let them get along with the Bible. Yes. God, let them see a daddy that'll go out in the woods somewhere, God, with a Bible and a bottle of water and pray. Hey, Amen. Let them answer, Father. Help us, Lord. God, we love you. Amen. God, help us to pray. Oh. Forgive us, forgive us yeah. Father, for forsaken prayer. Oh, forgive me, Father, for not praying yes. enough, God. Oh, forgive us. Oh, God, it's me, God. It's me in need of prayer. God, forgive oh, God. me tonight. Yes. Lord, can be their heart. Lord, I want to pray for my people, God. Oh, oh God. God, forgive me. Forgive me, God. God, help me to pray. Oh, Amen, God. preacher. God bless you. God, help us. Help us, Father. God, I don't know about y'all, but there's one thing I forsake, one thing I, I stumble at. It's prayer. Bless you, preacher. And I, I, wanna, I don't want my people to think I don't pray for them because I do. But, man, when you start thinking about the needs of people and what folks are going through, we need to intercede for each other. Bro, Amen. Brother Cogan is going to talk to us about revival tonight for a minute. We always... We kind of been making this a staple. We finish up either talking about revival and Thanksgiving. So I told him just to talk about it together. Amen. Just he's going to talk about our need for revival. 
And as we pray after he's done, we just pray for God to send revival to our churches yes. and, and giving thanks for what God's done. Go ahead, Brother Cody. Amen. Well, as he told me to uh, talk about revival, I couldn't help but think about Isaiah chapter 1. Verse 15 says, And when you spread forth your hands, I will hide mine eyes from you. Mm. Yea, when you make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Wash you, make you clean, put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil, learn to do well, seek judgment, relieve the oppressed, judge the fatherless, plead for the widow. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Amen. Though they be red like crimson, Hallelujah. <laughs> they shall be as wool. Yes. I couldn't get off of my mind hey, to go through this pandemic, this coronavirus. Go ahead, they, son. they keep making the statement about wash your hands. And I can't help but compare that to revival. Yeah. And a statement by Billy Sunday, he said about revival, a revival does two things. First, it returns the church from her backsliding. And second, it causes the conversion of men and women. And mm. it always includes the conviction of sin on the part of the church he said, what a spell the devil seems to cast over the church today. And I think about James where it says, draw, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. If we want him to do Amen. something, we need to do something uh, yes. first. We need yes. to do our Amen. part if we want God to truly do his part. If Go ahead. It takes it back to Second Chronicles chapter 7. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. Yes. If we want God to do something, there's a pre prerequisite on our behalf. There's something that we've got to do if we want God to do something. We've got to yeah. do our part so he'll do his part. And I can't get that statement off my mind. Wash your Hands. As we're looking at Isaiah, he said, wash you in verse 16, make you clean, put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes, cease to do evil, learn to do well, seek judgment, relieve the oppressed, judge the fatherless, plead for the widow. You see, we always say we want revival, but we act, do, do our actions back up what we're saying. Does mm -hmm. our walk back up what our talk is saying? Go ahead, the Bruce, Bruce. Say, God revive us, but do our lives reflect what we're saying at the house of God? And Amen. I just noticed a couple things about this. We wash our hands for the reason of, first of all, we notice the purpose of washing hands. You wash your hands for sanitation reasons. You wash them to get the dirt off, to get the filth mm -hmm. off, to get them clean. Yeah. Then you wash your hands for separation, to uh, clear up some things, to say, hey, I'm not associated with this pilot. He washed his hands and he said, hey, I don't have anything to do with this. So mm -hmm. you wash your hands for sanitation. You wash them for separation. You wash them for sanctification. You wash them to climb up, to draw closer to God. You sanctify yourself and put away some things so that you may be closer drawn to God in your relationship and fellowship with him. If we want revival, then we've got to notice the purpose of washing our hands is to sanctify, is to sanitize, is to get clean. Yep. We need to get our lives Go clean ahead. if we want God to revive us. The purpose of washing our hands is to draw closer to God. Hey, not only the purpose of it, but then we notice the purpose of washing our hands is there's pollution. The pollution is, um, this is some things that came from Leonard Ravenhill in his book on revival. We must wash our hands because they're dirty because we have so many commercials. We've commercialized the church. We think we do oh, God yeah. a favor and we live Hollywood style church lives and we go, go about this and we do all these things and we've commercialized the church. We made it all public and just tried to go big or go home and we try to do everything we can just as far as the worldly side of it and we try to mm. promote this promote that but we've forgotten the power of God's side of it and our hands are so dirty and filled up with commercializing the church not mm. only commercializing it but Bless the preacher that we have cheapened the very gospel of Jesus Christ we've cheapened it because mm. we have music set to dance tempo we have a couple <laughs> words about God we yeah. have scare tactics to get people to the altar we have stained glass masquerades in the middle. we've got mannequins in the church we're just plastic people in little plastic pews going to a, a pointless <laughs> vain a church house to do nothing else but to just please the flesh and make our flesh preacher uh, we have easy believism that's infected the church we just say yeah. well, you just uh, say these little words and everything will be all right 
But what we're doing when we do these things, when we're cheapening the gospel, we are yeah. dishonoring the very blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. The gospel is free and it is simple, but it is not cheap. But there was a great price that was paid for the gospel yes. of Jesus Christ today. Yes. But yet we have cheapened it. We have so many TV preachers that cheapen the gospel of Jesus Christ and got away from the very purpose of it. There's power in it and it costs heaven the very best that it had to offer it cost god his only begotten son on calvary's hill yeah. to pay for our salvation so how dare we and my prayers that god would help us come on pray in the gospel come of on jesus christ so bless we your heart we commercialize the church we play games we put on shows we put on little we get on the platform we just mess around and we have an hour-long service and then we leave and we come to back the same way we came and nobody's helped nobody's changed nobody oh, gets saved yeah. god is not glorified God not pleased. we cheapen the very thing that we're living for Lord help for Jesus we commercialize church there's cheapness of the gospel and then there's just carelessness on the behalf of the church you see mm. we don't care much anymore this is a great deal of we need to have some care like Jesus does but we've become so careless with the things of God we don't care how we live we don't care how we talk we don't care how go we ahead talk. preacher we care if God shows up. We don't care if anything great happens. You're right. God's glorified. I want to read you this. Leonard Ravenhill said this. He said, there's a good title for the church. He said, it's we wrestle not. He said, we will display our gifts natural or spiritual. We will air our views political or spiritual. We will preach a sermon or write a book to correct the brother. But who will storm hell's stronghold? Who will say the devil nay? Who yes. will deny himself good food, good company, or good rest? That hell may gaze upon him, wrestling, embarrassing demons, liberating captives, depopulating hell, and leaving an answer to his travail, a trail of blood-washed souls. He also said we need more agonizers, not organizers. Yeah. We don't truly care about worship and being in the power of the Holy Ghost anymore, but we just care about the show. We care about the games. We care about the money. And we have cheapened it. We've commercialized it. And we've become careless with the things of God. We don't have anybody. Really, there's not many seeking after God as we ought to be. And then there's cowardliness on the behalf of the church. We've got cowardliness on our hands. You see, God we shut us. down when the government tells us. We do what they want us to do. We we are not willing. You see, the our forefathers have have uh, fought and paid for too much for us to just lay down everything and give up on it. You see, right. our Bible has cost too much and a great price for us to just give up, walk away from Amen, it. Preacher. We don't need that anymore, but it's time that we stop just cowering down and being um, just uh, giving up and laying down everything. Yes. It's time that we say, give me spiritual liberty or give me death. It's time to stand Amen. for the things that we hold dear. We don't need false religion. We don't need uh, the things of the world. We don't need the wickedness. We don't need the sin of the church. It's time to wash our hands. A man by the name of Ignaz Semmelweis, he was a doctor back in the 1800s. And when a uh, puerpular fever, I, I don't know if I'm saying it right, puerpular fever, a uh, childbed fever back in the 1800s was going rampant, going all over the place. Mothers and children were dying by the dozens, and they could not figure out what was going on. They could not figure out why all these people were dying. Ignaz Semmelweis stood up at a uh, doctor's convention, if you will, in the 1800, I believe it was 1850, Ignaz Semmelweis told them three words. He said, I've got the solution to your problem, the thing that is killing all these people. He said, wash your hands. Mm. <laughs> wash your hands. He told them about how they would do a biopsy on the dead bodies, and then immediately they would go to the people that were, the mothers that were giving birth, and they would infect them because they did not wash their hands. They were carrying the bacteria from these dead bodies over to the new children and these mothers that mm -hmm. were giving birth. And that was causing them to die as well. And he told them, you need to wash your hands. And that began to save many and countless lives. And you see, spiritually, it's the same thing. We are living in a world with dead people. We are walking around with dead people. We Go are ahead, in the Richard. world and we are getting infected with the deadness and the bacteria of the world. And then we come yeah. into church and we're saying, well, we want God to revive us, but yet we're touching. You see lost people are looking at us and saying, well, they're not any different than the uh, world is. They, they don't have any different thing than I do. They're doing the same things we do. Why do we want what mm. they have? 
Why do we want Jesus when he doesn't do anything, when he doesn't change anything? They live the same way we live. They do the same things we do. There's nothing good happening in their life. Why do we want that Jesus? And it's because we need to wash our hands. Hey, we need to clean up our lives so that God can work again. We got to yes. draw nigh to God so that he will draw nigh to us. We need to wash our hands and sanctify ourselves to him. We need to clean up our lives. Amen. And again, Amen. the product that will clean up our lives. What's going to clean up our lives? What's going to cause revival to happen? Well, it said, come let us reason together. Though our sins be as scarlet, they mm. shall be as white as snow. You know what we need? We need to get the blood of Jesus on us again. You see, Amen. we get saved and we get washed in the blood and we say, oh, well, we don't we don't have to pray forgiveness anymore. We don't got to repent anymore. We're good. Uh, we're glorified already. We're perfect. We don't, we, we've got spiritual perfection. We're all right <laughs> till we get to heaven. Everything's going to be fine. But no, we as children of God need to be on our knees praying that God would keep us clean and help us to stay clean and to serve him and love him and not get around the things of the world. We need to clean our hands. We need to wash our hands if we're going to pray. Amen. If we're going to pray like we've been doing tonight, we've got to get our lives clean. God said, You're right. you regard iniquity in your heart, yes, I will not right. hear you. He said yeah. in Isaiah, he said, you've got blood on your hands. But instead Amen. of having the world's blood on our hands, we need to have Jesus' blood on our hands that it cleanses us and makes us as white as snow so that he can use us, so that he can revive us, so that he can do great and mighty things. I want to see God move. But if we're going to see God move, the church of the living God is going to have to humble ourselves and pray and wash our hands. If yeah, we want us to revive, we got to get clean. Amen. So gotta, I'm not just talking about drinking alcohol, doing drugs, going out and committing adultery, but I'm talking about that bitterness, that unforgiven spirit. Yes, that sir. thing that's hidden way down deep inside of us that nobody else even knows about that we're hiding from them in our heart. It's time yes. to get that right. We get some unity and we clean up our lives and get closer to God that he might. Amen. Amen. If we Amen. want to get revival, we got to wash our hands. Amen. 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 Yeah, we got to get clean. Uh, my pastor wrote a book on revivalists again. He said this, the answer to our survival is revival. The key to our thriving is reviving. Breaking up our fallow ground will allow heavenly rain to fall upon the sown seed and give a fresh glimpse at the Savior. Who will be broken enough to get up, open the door for our knocking king? Who will be sober enough to see the actual state of affairs and silence the noise so that he or she can once again hear the voice of the Holy Spirit? It will take someone who sees the broken heart of the Savior and in repentance and humility says no more. It's time that we as Christians, if we want revival, it's time we say no more to some things. Amen. Some things that we just say, God, we're tired of this. It ain't happening no more. Like that song we sang earlier about sending the rain. We got to get tired of it so that we can get ready for it. Amen. We prepare for. We need to get prepared if we want revival. We got to plant the seed and get ready for it. God's not going to send revival if we don't get ready for it. That's so right, preacher. So that He will revive us. Amen, preacher. So let's pray. Let's. Let's ask God to revive us and help yes. us get our hands yes. clean. And let's be thankful to God that we live in the country that we do. Yeah, amen. amen. He's blessed That's us good. beyond all measure. Yes, right? sir. God has put us in a place where we can serve him and worship him freely. We don't have to worry about being beheaded or killed, but we can serve him and worship him in freedom and worship him in spirit and truth. What a blessing. Amen. To be. What amen. a blessing to have the families that we do. What a blessing to be on here with you uh, preachers tonight. And just pray together. God's truly blessed us. We ought to be thankful to Him. Amen. And anticipate the great things He's going to do Amen. in the days ahead. And uh, let's pray together. You you know, t yesterday there I think there was about two hundred fifty thousand, right, Brother Jason? Praying yeah. together, yes. just all over the country, just praying, seeking God's face. And uh, I'm praying that this whole thing will just this whole virus and everything going on that it'll be a jump start. That'll just be a trampoline for the church to get revival, just be a kickstart. Yes. Amen. God may do great and mighty things that he'll wake us up. That could be what he was doing with all this, trying to get us awake. Amen. Make us aware of what's going on around us because we're living in those last days. But I still believe even in these last days, God can revive us. Amen, preacher. Do what he's always done. He's still the same as he always has been. Yes. Let's pray together. Amen. Oh, God. Yes. 
Lord. Yeah, we love you tonight. Thank you once again. God be oh, praying for you tonight. Lord, I don't want to see the cold. Lord, I want to thank you. 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 Lord, I want to
God, Thank you for praying, Mom. I thank you for praying, grandparents. I thank you for praying, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He's good to us, ain't he, fellas? Amen. Amen. Well, thank you all for being on here. Thank you. Thank you. We want real revival, amen. We want to see God do something. Thank you for coming on, Kogan, tonight. Appreciate that. Good preaching. I'm telling you, once we get back to church, I, I hope our prayer lives are just yes. potent, amen. I hope there's amen. power. Amen. And, uh, we could we could really see a mighty revival. I believe it. Amen. Uh, yes, sir. Amen. Absolutely. Well, all right. I hope this ain't the last one, fellas. But we may have to change a day and do things different. But uh, thank y'all for helping, brother Chris and brother Jody. Thank y'all for helping me these six times. Amen. It's been yeah, phenomenal. It's been wonderful. Brother. We'll Praise see you. what the Lord does. Thank you, uh, Kogan. Tell Michaela thank you for singing. Amen. That's That's wonderful. Wonderful. Y'all need to sing another one before we get off, unless you really want to. We're on 15 minutes past an hour. And, uh, but thank you guys yeah, so much. I was long winded. It's my fault. <laughs> I think we all were tonight. <laughs> we, 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 we ran a couple rabbits. We should have just shot them. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I don't know, but, uh, thankful for all the folks. We've had a lot of repeat folks on here every week. And yep. I wish other folks knew what they was missing out on, amen. But we've had a lot of folks been on here every week giving prayer requests, praying. I want to thank you guys, all of y'all that, that have signed on over and over amen. Uh, every time and just helped us pray. I don't know about y'all, but this is what I've been missing about church is just praying together with God's people. Amen. amen. But without further ado, thank you guys. Thank y'all for being on. Thank y'all for being on here. And we're going off air. And uh, so thank you very much. And if you've got any questions or anything, if you, uh, somebody on here, uh, Brother Golf, want, something, want me to talk to you, call me. I'll be at the church, 304-372-8440. And uh, thank you guys for signing on. Amen. Amen. Anybody else got anything? Y'all good? Amen. Y'all keep Amen. on praying. Keep praying. Amen. All right. Amen.
All right, team. Peace, love, and chicken grease. See y'all later on the flip yeah, side. Amen. Good night.